Here's one way to increase the range of your handheld radio as you hold it over a car. It's nice to have a, a you know, a mic and speaker that can be removed for it, but holding your radio over a car, the car roof, if it's metal, will work as a ground plane and it will increase the efficiency of your handheld transceiver. And this will go with a with a this a two meter radio, a GRMS radio, a, a family service radio. They'll be in, the effectiveness will be increased. Hi, Mike Kennedy, and we're talking about ways that you can increase the effectiveness of your handheld transceiver. Okay, this goes with a two meter radio, family service radios, and uh, GRMS radios. Okay. One of the first things you should know is that radio waves are polarized. That means that they have to have the right orientation of the antenna. FM is pretty much universally polarized vertically. So if you talk with your handheld like this, okay, with the antenna running this way, you're going to lose a lot of your signal. Just the, the uh, polarization is going to be wrong so it isn't picked up as well and also the uh, dynamics of how the signal is spread is not going to work as well either. Well, I got rained out on that. I was doing the, the things about the increasing the range of your handheld and uh, it's pouring now. But we can still talk about it in the car. Okay, one of the other things is the antenna, okay? Uh, once you get up to the ham radios, the GRMS radios, Maybe not, not the family service radios, but the antennas are removable usually. This is an older cell connection, okay? Most newer radios have an SMA connector, which is a really small connector, but you can still disconnect the antenna and connect other antennas. Now, if you're having a two meter rate uh, antenna, I mean two meter radio, if you're doing both two meter and 440, a nine inch antenna works, works really well because it resonates on both frequencies, okay? So you can keep the same antenna on there for the two frequencies. Now, if you just get two meter, a, a, a nine inch antenna is better than the small rubber ducky, but what's really better is a 19 inch antenna. You can buy an, a spare antenna, and some of them are even flexible whips. So they, they kind of look like a rubber duck, but they're different. And even if it's not as flexible, but putting that 19 inch antenna on your two meter radio is going to dramatically affect uh, how much signal is broadcast. Okay, or, well, let's, let me put it this way it's going to be much more efficient. The same amount of signal is going out through the antenna, but it's going to be used much more efficiently. Uh, I like this antenna. This is actually a Radio Shack product. I think this is one of the better Radio Shack products out there. Unfortunately, Radio Shack is gone, and my last efforts at trying to see if they had any of these left is, is that they don't. But uh, this one has a coil, okay? What does a coil generally do in an antenna? A coil generally shortens the electrical length. So let's just leave it at that and say, it, the radio thinks the antenna is longer than it really is, which is good, okay? Now, this antenna actually goes up quite a bit more, but if I read the instructions, I find out that to tune it to two meters, I put this one little section in. Okay, now I have quite a long antenna, and I'll tell you, it dramatically increases both the receive and transmit power of my handheld. This puts out two watts, okay? Now some of the older radios, which are really nice, is this has uh, different battery, battery packs that can go with it. It has rechargeables, but this is a pack that I can open up and put AA batteries in. Six volts, there's one for nine volts, there's one for 12 volts. So with the, the pack I'm using now, I get about two watts out, but if I put the 12 volt on, I can get five watts out. It's interesting to note, too, you should be familiar enough with your radio to realize that there's usually power settings. Most radios have that are, are 
uh, more sophisticated like ham radios have different power level letting level settings so you want to know whether you're on low or high power now you know if you're doing something close you can be on low power and save battery strength but if you need to go for the maximum range you want to have your unit set on high power uh, that's where my little pitch comes in about the only way you're going to, you know, people are buying a lot of these inexpensive $40, $60 uh, two-meter radios from China, and they're buying for, for an emergency, which sounds great, but without getting a ham radio license and practicing, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like buying a gun and putting it in your bureau with some bullets, and then you wait for something where you need the gun, you take it out, you fumble with it, you try to load it, you try to aim it at something and shoot it. And, you know, do you have the safety on or not? Did you load it properly? Is the gun going to jam? Uh, do you even know how to hold the gun properly? Well, it's kind of the same, you know, it's kind of the same with a two meter ham radio. Uh, uh, to get the maximum use out of this, you've got to learn how to program it. You got to learn what's available in your local area for repeaters. Repeaters are devices that uh, well, you broadcast this up, it picks it out, and broadcasts it back out at a much higher power. And sometimes these repeaters will be linked to different locations. So with this radio here, I'm actually at a, the higher lo location in Gorham. I've come to Fort Hill which uh, you'll see in a little thing I put that it's 397 feet here. I can actually see line of sight Mount Washington from here. I could talk to the repeater on Mount Washington with this 2 watt radio, and that could be broadcast out over there. So just for an instance showing you that uh, uh, if I didn't know that repeater was there and I didn't have it programmed in, and, you know, some of these radios, especially the inexpensive ones, you know, they kind of have a lot of menus behind things. And it, it could be extremely difficult when you're, you decide that you want to use it to figure out how to use it right. Okay. So, uh, ham radio licenses are extremely easy to get now in the United States. I think they're $15 for the testing fee. You can buy a book by Gordon West on getting a technician license study that for a month and go take a test or uh, you can go to a there, there's all kinds of amateur radio clubs we've got we've got two of them now in our area and uh, you know they'll host classes where you learn to uh, learn the material and take the test and really the, the the basic technician one that gives you all the access to the two meter is really really simple to take to learn and to pass Another option I want to show you with these antennas is the idea of, you saw me with the car using the, the car as a ground plane. Well, we can do something else uh, with a piece of wire to get that same effect. Okay, we can take any kind of piece of conductive wire we have, right? We can wrap it around just the bottom okay now the the bottom part here you can see right here see there's an insulator antennas kind of have two prongs there's one here and there's one that goes up here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this around like this now I can bring this down and cut it off at 19 inches and already I'd, I'd wrap it a little tighter than that, but uh, uh, to make it a little tighter, okay? And there are connectors you can buy, and we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. But just by adding a 19-inch piece of wire and hanging, ideally it's supposed to be 45 degrees, but even just having a piece of wire hanging like that, that's 19 inches long, will dramatically increase the effectiveness of your handheld transmissions because this shapes the signal and allows the signal to go more out than just up or just down and normally you're communicating with someone 
this way, you're not communicating with someone below you or usually someone above you. Unless you're trying to communicate with the space station or something like that. But, so here's a really simple hack you can do. And to do it, all you need is some wire. Usually stiff wire works better because ideally you want it to be, I would wrap this around and have this come off it, try to have it come off at 45 degrees like this more. And uh, you could put up to four of those on if you really want to it to make it work really well. And again, with those wires hanging out, you know, it could be helpful again to have a remote mic or earphones and speakers so that you can just hold that and then, you know, do this. Uh, so there we have uh, some easy to do hacks on how to increase the range of your HT. We've got to review, we have the polarization, we have elevation, sometimes just uh, two, one of the effects we can get, and it doesn't sound like it would make a difference, but it can make quite a difference, is if we have this remote mic, we can hold this radio up, of course I can't do it in the rain in the car, we can hold this as high as we can over our head, uh, you know, and and use this uh, this microphone here, and just the fact of holding it way the arm's length above our heads in some situations will increase your range, especially if you're around a lot of metal, around a lot of cars, different things. Uh, you'd be surprised, but that can make a difference sometimes. Just and. Uh, then also we talk about elevation. I've come to this point that's 397 feet above uh, sea level. That's the highest point in Gorham. So I don't have to worry here basically about my signal being obstructed somehow. At my house I do. <laughs> my house I have a metal roof which uh, basically uh, this doesn't work too good in my house at all I'll tell you. And plus there's kind of a ridge between uh, my house and some other places which isn't good. Which, again, warrants the idea of an antenna, a two-meter antenna, that's put on a higher mass. In other words, if I take my house and I put, uh, let's not call it a tower, but we're just going to say an antenna. Say I put a pole up 20 feet on the top of my house and then I mount the antenna on it. That's going to make a dramatic difference for two-meter transmissions at my house. So I hope you enjoyed some of these hacks that you can use with your radio. Uh, we've got uh, the polarization, the elevation, we've got the antenna length, and then we have the, uh, the using the car as a ground plane maybe, but then uh, using some wire to provide that ground plane at 45 degrees. But it, frankly, even the wire hanging down from your radio is going to help. So Mike Kennedy, Get a license, learn how to use it, so then when you have a need for it, everything will be programmed and all the local repeaters and everything, or, or the frequencies that you want to use with your friends or whatever, and, and then you'll be able to do it when you need it. Bye.